really fast, is it? So I think that maybe we should we would be able to begin. Can everyone hear hear our voices and see all of our faces who have the videos open? <laughs> And um, just to remind you that if you can keep yourself muted during the, the webinar, um, you can also you can write questions to the chat room. And at the end, we have time for the questions and answers section at the end. So, um, so if we if we can keep the schedule so that everyone can keep their um, presentations, and then we'll let the questions and answers come at the end. So if that's possible for everyone, and you can write them to the chat, so we will collect everything from there. But welcome all. Um, it is really nice to have you all here. Today we have again a new area on our hand. We have Tunisia. Tunisia over here, we've had these webinars um, from, from Saudi Arabia. We've had them from Egypt. We've had them from um, uh, Morocco. And now, like I said, it's really nice to have you all here and this is provided by the Finnish Arab Business Association. I'm the chair of the Finnish Arab Business Association. My name is Tutti Sirola and I really want to welcome you all here. I'm not going to talk long because there's a lot wiser people on the line over here and who, who can tell you a lot more about the business in Tunisia and we have really really good speakers over here today and I would like to welcome you all. We have the ambassador of Tunisia and Helsinki, Her Excellency Ms. Sarah Shawani Abidi over here. Welcome. Then we have Mr. Abel Basset Kani, who is the Director General for uh, Foreign Investment Promotion Agency. And you are sitting in Tunisia at the moment with a lot warmer weather and up for us in Finland over here. Then we have Mr. Imed Fayed who is the Director of Cooperation with UE, which is Tunisia Expert Promotion Center. And at the end, before the questions and answers section, we have some company presentation by Ms. Ebna Ekri. Are you over here also online already? Yes. Yes, yes. nice to see yeah. your face. And you're a Director of Marketing at Innova Robotics, which is like, like I'm really kind of looking forward to that presentation as well. And then we also have Mr. Usama Mesoud, Chairman of the Data Bora, are you also over here? Haven't seen your face yet. Hopefully, you are over here as well. Maybe you join us later. But um, we'll check that out before before he's he's on online just before four. So I think we'll do fine. We'll check that out before that. But thank you all for joining us. Interesting presentations, and we will be recording the webinar, and you will also. If I can ask in the beginning from all the all the presentation all the keynote speakers that can we then send your presentations to all all the people joining afterwards? Is that possible? Yes, Good. of course. Good, because usually there's a lot of information and people then want to later on ask you also and be in contact with you and and ask questions later on as, as well. So thank you for that. But with this, I would like to turn the microphone to Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Tunisia, Mrs. Shawini, please. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's a real uh, delight for me to join you uh, online. It would have been great uh, to meet uh, all of you here in Helsinki face to face, but uh, in the current circumstances, Fortunately, webinars provide us good alternative to meet, ex discuss and exchange views. Let me first thank the Finland Chamber of Commerce uh, for their cooperation, availability and involvement to organize this event and to salute my friends in the Tunisian Foreign Investment Promotion Agency and Tunisian Export Promotion Center for their devotion and cooperation in these challenging times. I would like also to welcome the Finnish and Tunisian companies for their interest by joining by joining the webinar today to know more about opportunities of doing business between the two countries. As you know, Tunisia and Finland have celebrated last year the 60th anniversary of their diplomatic relationship. But the level of trade, exchange and economic cooperation is still under the expectation of the two sides and it can be improved. 
with regard to the opportunities of deepening economic and trade cooperation between the two countries that will be presented and explained and explained later uh, by the by our experts i would like to emphasize on three things first of all the new momentum on the rise in tunisia 10 years after the country set the ball rolling on the arab spring uprising Tunisia needs all the support to continue on the path of democracy and investing today in Tunisia is investing in democracy. Second, the growing importance of the African continent and the launch of the African continental free trade area that will be the largest in the world. I know that this important has been reflected in Finland's foreign policy and the Finnish business community is already involved in the drawing up of the first ever Africa strategy in Finland. In that framework, I would like to remind that due to its privileged geographical position, Tunisia has many advantages which allow it to position itself as a privileged route of penetration towards Africa and the country is interested in multiplying its triangular relations and to become a regional and global hub between Africa and the rest of the world. Third, the impact of the coronavirus crisis and the ongoing debate over shortening European supply chains. I do believe that Tunisia is well placed to benefit from these considerations. I hope that the business circles of Tunisia and Finland will forge ahead, deepen and expand the economic and trade cooperation based on complementary advantages, mutual benefit, and win-win results, and play a positive role in promoting friendship between the two countries and the two peoples. Finally, the Tunisian Embassy in Finland will provide, as always, support and services needed will address difficulties and provide necessary safeguards. I wish you all a very productive and enjoyable webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much for these words and thank you for joining us. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Then we have Mr. Abel Basekani and you, you from Tunisia and please Eva, send us your regards and a lot of warm and sun over here to us with your words. Please, table is yours. Thank you very much. Very good afternoon to all your, uh, the participants, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Tunisia and Helsinki, the, uh, uh, the uh, organizers. I would like first of all to thank all the those who have contributed to the organization of this webinar in particular the Finnish Arab Business uh, Association and the FinCham. And also uh, great thanks also to our panelists, from my colleague from CPEX, uh, our colleagues from uh, Innova Robotics and also from Datavora. It's really a great pleasure to be with you today and we will try to do our best to provide you with the information on the business environment and the investment opportunities prevailing in Tunisia. I'm trying to share the presentation with you. I'm wondering if you see the presentation. We can see it well, yes. Well, yes. Okay, during this uh, presentation, I will try to cover the following subjects. So I will give you an overview about the FDI in Tunisia, uh, the major assets and why to choose Tunisia, and the last uh, about opportunities in high value added activities. Uh, despite the current difficult situation, Tunisia uh, maintains its position as an attractive business uh, destination. Uh, foreign direct uh, uh, investment in Tunisia is very important. We have now over 3,600 foreign companies uh, providing jobs to more than 400,000 people. 80% of uh, FDI uh, are mainly from Europe. So Europe is our major partner. And uh, 
75% of these companies are wholly exporting. Uh, substantial investment uh, are in the manufacturing industries as they, they represent over 54%, and the evolution of foreign direct investment in the, uh, in the manufacturing sector is mainly driven by substantial investment in the electrical electronics and in particular in the automotive components in the past years. Here you have some example of uh, international companies based in Tunisia. And most of them, of course, they are, uh, it's a mixture from ma major European uh, companies from uh, North America and also from Asia. What are the main assets of Tunisia? I will be focusing on four major assets. It's mainly, uh, as mentioned by Her Excellency, the uh, geographic position of Tunisia. And the second asset, of course, is the, the, uh, related to the human resource the infrastructure and also the business-friendly environment prevailing in Tunisia. Uh, indeed, Tunisia benefits from uh, the key geographic proximity uh, mainly to uh, Europe. Sorry. And uh, so we, uh, we have, which enable uh, foreign companies based in Tunisia to access, uh, access to major markets. And also, Tunisia has signed several free trade agreements with different parts of the world, in particular the free trade agreement with the EU, with, uh, free trade agreement with neighboring countries, and also with parts from Middle East and the Arab world. And we are enhancing our integration, of course, with Africa, in addition to historical links with sub-Saharan African countries. We are now integrating major uh, groups of uh, mainly in uh, eastern and uh, southern Africa and all, also the western part of Africa. Uh, we have several, several free uh, trade agreements and also non-double taxation. And we have a bilateral investment treaty between Tunisia and Finland, which uh, was uh, entered into force in 2003. This, the main assets of Tunisia is its, uh, its uh, human resource. Of course, we have a large pool of highly skilled labor force. It's uh, plus 60,000 new graduates per year for a population of about 11 million. 35% of the graduates are uh, in engineering and uh, ICT fields. And also, we have a high level of multilingualism in particular the English language, in addition to uh, French, and also we have Italian, Spanish, and other German languages. So Tunisia is the first innovative co uh, economy in North Africa, according to the Global Innovation Index 2020. And it's also uh, in terms of education, in scientific, uh, scientific and technical uh, articles, it's also a uh, leading position in North Africa and also worldwide. Uh, we have uh, confirmed expertise. Tunisia is ranked, as I mentioned, first in North Africa in terms of general expertise. We have a strong R&D activity, and I believe that Innova Robotics and Datagora will provide their testimony, and you will see that we have a strong uh, expertise in this field. Even uh, manufacturing industries, they are no now moving to diversify their activity in Tunisia in the automotive, in the aeronautics, in the uh, agri-food. They are all uh, developing new activities, in particular in R&D. There is a, cap a strong capacity of innovation. Uh, Tunisia is ranked third innovative economy in Africa, and also a leading uh, uh, position uh, global, uh, worldwide. We have a, a strong, uh, la large pool of graduates, uh, 11 ICT graduates per year, including uh, 3,000 engineers, of which 75% are in IT engineering. Uh, so the, we have, unfortunately, it's challenging for the Tunisian government, but it's an opportunity for foreign companies, a high level of, uh, of unemployment within graduates. It's, it can reach up to 30%. And also uh, what should be mentioned is the availability in the uh, managerial uh, skills. Uh, most of foreign companies and international companies based in Tunisia, they are managed by Tunisians. 
This is also a strong asset and differentiate Tunisia with, with competing uh, other countries. We have also a good infrastructure, which enable foreign companies to work in good conditions in terms of the availability of industrial land, also integrated space, what we call the techno parks, uh, dedicated uh, uh, techno parks for different sectors, and also three major uh, techno parks uh, uh, from the north to the south, and they are covering mainly emerging activities such as the uh, mechatronics, the information communication technology, and also the digital sectors. So it's very important. And also the availability of class A standard for all added value activities, service added value activities. The uh, availability of, uh, of course, of uh, friendly business environment. You know that we uh, foreign direct. We start with foreign direct investment uh, back to the early 70s. So we review. We are reviewing the legal framework on a regular basis. And uh, the last investment law, which has been entered into force in the early 2017, provides for the freedom of investment in the majority of sectors. Simplified procedure for the implementation of international companies. There is no restriction for the transfer of profits and capital gains, and also the ease for all the operations related to import and export. They are all done on site, and we are, of course, working on a daily basis to improve the business environment in Tunisia. There are several uh, sub, uh, incentives which are granted to foreign investors, of course, uh, according to some uh, criteria. The priority for the Tunisian government is many, mainly export, so we encourage export. We encourage high added value activities, that's why we call them priority sectors. These activities, there are more than 20 activities considered as priority sectors. And those, uh, uh, they benefit of the maximum of, of incentives in terms of subsidies, uh, income tax exemptions, the assumption by the state of the uh, uh, social contribution, and also for the training cost. We have also substantial incentives granted to uh, prior project of national interest. These are projects which respond to uh, two major criteria in terms of the investment, which should be at least 50 million Tunisian dinars, or they are employing 500 employees within three years. So, and all of course, we have also as a third priority the regional development. You know that most of our economy is concentrated on the eastern coast. That's why the government is encouraging local and also international investors to uh, move their investment and they uh, implement their uh, operation uh, to the western part of the country. And here they can uh, uh, be granted substantial incentives up to 30 percent of the amount of, uh, of the investment and also the uh, uh, exemption from income tax up to 10 years and also the assumption by the uh, government of the social contribution for uh, 10 years. These are, of course, there is uh, the possibility also to hire up to 30 percent of uh, the uh, foreign manager staff, which is very important for companies employing, looking to uh, improve the, the quality of their uh, uh, skills. We have also uh, put in place uh, a really a good law which encourages startup. We call it the Startup Act. Which, uh, which is a fund which aims to make Tunisia a startup nation at the crossroads from the southern Mediterranean, the MENA region, and Africa. So we are promoting Tunisia as a gateway to Africa because we have the, 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 uh, the possibility to, to enable, we are mainly promoting triangular cooperation. It means know-how from the, uh, from the uh, Western uh, countries with the uh, Tunisian capability for investment in Africa. So this law has been considered as the most innovative uh, and high impact project by the World Summit of the Information Society uh, 2020. And it has been ranked also first in North Africa for uh, startup without borders. Uh, and it's mainly made of 30 uh, measures 
designed to simplify the uh, emergence of uh, this kind of activities and which enable us to uh, have more than 400 uh, labelized startups. Really, it's a real boom, and we have witnessed during the COVID pandemic the emergence uh, by of technical solutions and equipment and contribution of Tunisian uh, with limited uh, means, and they are uh, helping Tunisia to face this pandemic. It's very important. And also the, uh, the, the testimonial of uh, Innova Robotics, which start as a startup and now it becomes really an international company, the same as uh, Datavora, will provide maybe better uh, uh, clearance on this regard. And numerous opportunities are prevailing in Tunisia, of course, as I mentioned. We start by the textile industry in the early uh, 70s, then we move to electric and electronics. And recently, we moved to high added value activities, mainly in the automotive components and in the aeronautics. Of course, in addition to high added value activities, and it's an opportunity to provide more information about the digital sector in Tunisia, which is one of the main strategic sector in Tunisia. It's a sector, a sector which witnesses 7% uh, average annual growth and contributes to about 8% to our GDP. It's made by more than 1,800 companies. Of course, uh, they are providing jobs to uh, more than 80,000 people. And the share of innovative uh, exporting companies represents over 50%. Tunisian digital industry is really fully engaged in uh, emerging activities. So here we have a mixture of Tunisian, 100% uh, Tunisian companies and international companies. So they are covering big data, blockchain, IoT, and uh, AI. So and they are really succeeding in recent years, and it's very uh, important to focus that there are many opportunities, maybe for uh, Finnish companies to work with the Tunisian startups and for the international market. The mechanical and electrical industries is also very important in Tunisia. It's the first exporting sector, and I presume my colleague Ahmed will provide more information about the uh, importance of this sector in terms of exports. It's made of uh, more than 1,000 companies. Uh, 600 companies with foreign participation. The, it's the, as I mentioned, uh, uh, 440 companies are wholly exporting. Uh, Tunisia is the seventh supplier of EU in electrical machinery and the uh, top three producer of automotive components in Africa. It's very important. It's a booming sector. Uh, despite the current situation, of course, the uh, automotive components, the aeronautics are the most affected one, but there are many opportunities in mainly in engineering and in innovative activities. And we are really happy to see international companies, German, Japanese, they are developing their activities and they are moving to more high added value activities. Uh, indeed, Tunisia is a reference site for automotive components and we are really now the main uh, promising opportunities, mainly in electric mobility and connected mobility. So uh, many Tunisian and also the, 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 uh, the what should be mentioned that we have 100% Tunisian companies and they are uh, playing on the international market and they are investing on the internet internationally. It's very important and it's a mixture between Tunisian and international companies. The pharmaceutical sector is one of also the uh, emerging activities. It's a sector with over 164 million uh, euro of, of exports. It's made of uh, over 120 companies. Uh, about 33 uh, are specialized in the pro production of medicines. Uh, we have all the uh, skills, uh, uh, plus 5,000 graduates per year. And also the training capability is very important. We have uh, 18 training institutions dedicated to the sector. It's a sector which contributes to 2% uh, 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 of our GDP. And there are many opportunities, in particular in the production of generic medication, vaccines and medication production based on biotechnology. And we have 
to have several uh, biotechnology techno parks in Tunis and also in the uh, uh, southern part of Tunisia and Sfax, uh, in pharmaceutical flavor, flavors industry, in paramedical industry, pharmaceutical packaging industry, and also glassware industry, R&D uh, outsourcing and biotechnology. And we have example of key players. They are mainly international uh, well-known companies and also Tunisian champions. It's an open sector where we invite really maybe uh, Finnish companies also to uh, explore the uh, various uh, different opportunities with, which are prevailing uh, in Tunisia. The fourth sector is the agribusiness sector, which is really a, a success story in terms of partnership because most of the, uh, of the investment made in Tunisia is we, uh, we uh, know how from uh, foreign companies with Tunisian capabilities. It's really 50% uh, uh, foreign participation and Tunisian uh, also participation. Tunisia is uh, the first country with recognition of the bio-EU equivalence 50, and has also the largest uh, organic services in Africa. It's very important for a small country and 80% uh, share of Tunisian bioproduction for export, mainly in the olive oil and also in other products. Uh, it's a sector with 1,000 uh, companies and employing uh, plus 75,000. It's one of the, the major uh, employers in the manufacturing industry. The strength of the sector, it's uh, Tunisia, as I mentioned, is a uh, world uh, export of dates and also of olive oil. There is a synergy between research center and company, so it's very important. We have a competitive labor cost, specific uh, investment incentive scheme. It's, it's considered as priority sector and also diversified and cross-sector investment incentive for all domains of the economy. Uh, some promising niches in this sector, organic products, packaging of and olive oil bottling, packaging and semi-preserves of fruits and vegetables, frozen products, cooked and semi-cooked dishes, canned products, proce processed seafood products, uh, fish and sell shellfish uh, farming, uh, dried tomatoes, essential oils, and I believe also that there are opportunities maybe uh, we invite Finnish companies to, uh, to consider these, these opportunities and we are able really maybe to identify the uh, best partners in coordination with our colleagues from CPEX and other uh, organizations. Other uh, opportunities are also prevailing in aerospace. As I mentioned, we have over 80 companies. It's a booming sector which employing over 17,000 people and we have uh, a large company already based in Tunisia and they are supplying OEM manufacturer uh, in Europe, either in France or in Germany or in the UK. The textile and upper sector, which is the traditional sector in Tunisia and we have uh, good expertise and know-how and uh, Tunisia is one of the uh, main suppliers of Europe. Uh, we are also launching uh, big infrastructure project, of course, to improve the quality of our uh, infrastructure in terms of new seaports, uh, airports, highways, industrial zones, uh, logistics zones, and really we invite foreign investors to be part of this uh, dynamism, and it's really open for uh, the uh, foreign investors. The renewable uh, energy is very important and also we have put in place a specific law which encourages uh, private and foreign investment. In, uh, it's mainly in energy and wind uh, energy because we have great potential in Tunisia and we have also a big need. Uh, the domestic market is in, uh, in need because we have a deficit of uh, energy. We are importing more than 50% of our needs. That's why we are encouraging. We have launched several projects. We start with bigger, small production. Now we are moving to bigger production. And also, again, I believe that Finland has a good expertise in this sector, and it's very important to, uh, to, to have some requests, and we'll be ready to help in this regard. 
medical tourism Tunisia has a, a strong experience in this field. We have over 100,000 uh, visitors per year. And Tunisia is the second uh, destination in uh, uh, health tourism. In, uh, uh, in particular, uh, it's, it's a good destination, well known. And we are really uh, looking to diversify also this sector, uh, moving to more uh, ecological uh, and also new uh, cultural uh, tourism and also the medical tourism. Environment also, it's very important. Uh, and I, I got, we got some requests related to waste treatment. And uh, I invite also, again, Finnish companies to uh, explore these opportunities and we'll be ready to, uh, to guide them. There are several opportunities within uh, private-public uh, partnership, so it's uh, the right uh, framework which enables foreign investors to work also with local, which encourages them to uh, explore the uh, business opportunities prevailing in Tunisia. Last uh, but not least is the quality of life in Tunisia. We have good uh, business, we have a good Mediterranean climate. We have also good education system with the presence of different international uh, education institutions from Canada, from the Great Britain, uh, USA, and France. We have good inf uh, health infrastructure, uh, as, I, as I mentioned. We have also uh, a unique cultural uh, heritage. And also Tunisia is one of the least expensive cities in Africa and Mediterranean basis for expats. We have thousands of expats, either they are uh, uh, working here in Tunisia or they are enjoying living with us. And really, uh, we invite also uh, Finnish uh, friends to come and visit and explore uh, our country. That's it for me, and uh, I thank you for uh, your attention, and I am ready to answer your question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kani. Um, I think we'll take the questions at the end. There, there actually came on questions, but if it's possible for you, I, I wrote it down here, and I'll, I'll definitely promise that I'll remember to ask that later on at the question and answer section. Uh, there's a lot of good information, a lot of information that was new to me and I think to a lot of other people as well. So very good presentation and hopefully we can get that later on and we'll get back to that at the end. Thank you for that. Then we have Mr. Imed Fire over here, who was the director of uh, cooperation with UE Tunisian Expert Promotion Center and I'll leave the table to you, please. Is are you there, Mr. Fayed? Are you there? Muted. Now we can hear you. Good. No, no, it's me. I I told you that it's, he's muted. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. There you are. Okay. Because I sharing, I'm sharing the. Okay, on to. Thank you, uh, Mr. Serola. You hear me now? Huh? We can hear you, thank you. And we can see the presentation, thank you. I will, I will check the presentation. Excellency, Mr. Sara, uh, the Ambassador of Tunisia in Helsinki, uh, Mr. Sirola, Chair of Finnish Arab Business Association, Mr. Ranmi, Director General of Foreign Investment Promotion Agency, FIPA, uh, our guests, online guests, uh, participants from Finland, uh, Finland and Tunisia, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to be uh, here with you to participate in this webinar uh, dedicated to, to business opportunities between Tunisia and Finland. Uh, my name is Imad Hafaid. I'm, I'm the Director of Cooperation uh, in Tunisian Export Promotion Center, CEPEX, which is similar than uh, the, the same institution in, in Finland, it's FinPro. So uh, we are a state-owned uh, institution operating under the umbrella of uh, uh, Tunisian Ministry of Commerce and uh, Export Development. Uh, our main duty is to promote uh, Tunisian, made in Tunisian and increasing international visibility uh, of Tunisian export potential worldwide. We, uh, we organized lots of event trade promotional events uh, internationally, uh, uh, trade shows, uh, business meetings. We assist foreign, uh, foreign importers 
so my presentation uh, will focus on bilateral trade and business opportunities between Tunisia and Finland. So uh, uh, just to uh, so Finland is, uh, is uh, the six uh, is ranked uh, 66th client of Tunisia. So uh, and it's the 20th in the rank of 20th among the European Union countries. Uh, we are also uh, Tunisia is the sixth supplier of Finland and the seventh client in Africa. So our uh, commerce, our bilateral trade uh, between the two countries is uh, 160 million dinars. So it's approximately uh, 50.2 million euro. We export uh, the value of 5.3 million uh, euro and we import uh, almost 44.9 million euro. During uh, the, 20, uh, the year 20, uh, 2020, our bilateral trade registered a decrease of uh, 23%. It's due to the economic chunk of the COVID-19 pandemic. But we are confident that uh, uh, after the COVID crisis, the exchange flow will uh, accelerate. As you can see uh, in this slide, uh, bilateral trade uh, show, shows its sustain, uh, sustainable growth, Tunisian export, to Finland have multiply, uh, multiplied three times during five, uh, five years, the last five years, with the record in 2018. Uh, the main uh, export uh, the, the by sector uh, is, is uh, Tunisian export uh, is strongly dominated by uh, the electric, uh, mechanical and electrical industry uh, with a share of 93%. As Mr. Vanmi mentioned, the, the, this very important sector, it's the first exporting sector in Tunisia with a share of uh, 43%. Uh, we export, Tunisia mainly export uh, uh, electrical cables, uh, automotive uh, component. Uh, uh, it's very uh, dynamic sector. So we are uh, importing from uh, Finland uh, other uh, wood and uh, uh, chemical uh, wood pulp. So what we are exporting to Finland uh, is uh, mainly uh, dominated with, with this sector. 58% uh, uh, of, uh, of what we are pro uh, exporting is reception apparatus for television. Next, uh, uh, machines for reception and conversion of voice. We export also 5% salt, uh, article of zinc, uh, some uh, article clothing. Uh, but according to the statistic of Finland, there are other products of Tunisia uh, made in Tunisia on the market, such as electric cables, uh, of course, uh, dates. Uh, uh, these products are exported uh, by other European country to Finland. They are exported mainly from Denmark, from Germany. Uh, what we are importing from uh, Finland is uh, wood sown and uh, 33%. A chemical wood pulp, 18%, and the rest is mainly uh, paper and paper uh, board. So we are uh, convinced that uh, trade between our countries is not uh, fully exploit exploited and the opportunities uh, exist for both sides. According to the analyze of the supply and the uh, demand potential of two countries, we can easily double our trade to exceed uh, 100 million euros. Uh, just to give you an idea, the untapped, untapped trade potential is estimated to uh, 54 million euros. Uh, just to have an idea about the product that can be exported uh, with a high potential of export to Finland, uh, we are speaking about uh, clothing, uh, wiring set for vehicles, dates, uh, electric conductors, etc. Just to give you an, an idea, Finland imports 3.5 million euro of dates, and Tunisia is the first exporter in the world. So, but these dates are uh, imported from other country, European country. For Finland, uh, the products with greatest export potential are uh, chemical uh, wood uh, pulp, uh, multiply uh, papers board, electric uh, products, etc. So, uh, 
plenty of opportunities are offered to furnish uh, investors and businessmen in many sectors. We can mention agro-food and organic products, such as uh, some pro kind of dates, olive oil, wine, uh, mechanical uh, textile and clothing, mechanical and electrical uh, industry. We're speaking about renewable energy and uh, uh, environment, especially waste management business, uh, engineering, uh, ITC, uh, medical and pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical product and services, uh, tourism and uh, hospitality. Uh, so, uh, another field of uh, uh, strategic cooperation, uh, Mr. Garbi and the Excellency mentioned the, the African hub, Tunisian as African hub in the region. Uh, Tunisian can be a hub for Finnish, uh, for Finnish company and uh, uh, especially thanks to a uh, good location in the heart of Mediterranean. And also, we have signed the lots of uh, trade agreement with more than 70 uh, countries representing 1.3 billion consumer. Uh, I want to uh, just stress on uh, Tunisian recent res accession to the common markets of Eastern and uh, Southern uh, Africa, Comesa. It's a market of or, uh, nearly uh, 500 million consumer. Uh, it represents a good opportunity also for Finland to consider Tunisia as a hub and the gateway to Africa. So I invite a, a Finnish company to co-producing and invest in Tunisia to open uh, uh, more export opportunities. So I can uh, give an example for, uh, for a kind of product. As you know, it's, we are uh, a company, for example, a company exporting from Finland, want to export a, a craft liner in rolls to Kenya. Uh, they have to pay 25% uh, 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 of custom duty. This, main co this company can produce the same product totally or just with an add value of 35% uh, in Tunisia uh, as a member of, uh, of Comesa. Uh, they can re-export from Tunisia to Kenya in free access. Just to give you an idea, Kenya import 25 million euro of this product. All Comesa country import more than 100 million euros of uh, a craft uh, liner. Also, I invite uh, the uh, Finnish company to uh, to uh, have uh, industrial to uh, subcontracting in Tunisia. Tunisia uh, propose uh, skills and know-how and competitiveness for subcontracting for uh, for uh, in many fields. So, electrical assembly, boards, and uh, plastic uh, parts, and uh, lots of product can be uh, subcontracting in Tunisia. Uh, some proposition to, uh, of action to be carried on to develop trade. Uh, we have to provide more information and export opportunities for the two countries. Uh, also, we have to develop meetings and contacts between business and uh, businessmen and organize a trade mission. I think the last uh, mission, uh, Finnish mission in Tunisia, it was in 2018 by the visit of the Minister of Environment, I think. So uh, we have to uh, develop this kind of meeting. Uh, uh, I propose that we organize uh, online B2B meetings between the, the company and the sector of petrol and the rest by using, for example, uh, a matching platform such as B2Match and we can, after the, the, the health situation improves, we can organize the, uh, the business uh, delegation visits in, uh, in both countries. Also, we have to uh, enhance participating in trade uh, shows and exhibition in two uh, countries. Uh, also, developing a new partnership by targeting other uh, uh, markets in uh, in tripartite approach uh, in, uh, in Africa or, or the neighborhood uh, uh, market. Uh, thank you very much. And if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Mr. Fayed. I can tell you that there was again a lot of new information, at least for me, and really interesting. I have a lots of questions. I hopefully I'm not the only one ask, asking them. I hope that there's going to be a lot of questions from our listeners. Very, very good presentation. Thank you very much for that. We'll get back to the questions at the end. Um, then we're going to the to the company presentations, and we have two keynote speakers over here. We have Miss Emna Mercy, who is the director of marketing of the Enova Robotics, and then we have Mr. Usama Mesod, from chairman of the Data no, Data Bon Bora company. Sorry about that. And um, so first. We take Ms. Emna Mercia. Are you here? And you have your yes. presentation. Yes. 
been ready. Yes, I'm here. Welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you. Okay. So you see my presentation we can see it well and we can hear you well thank you okay perfect okay so uh i'm so glad uh, to be here uh, today so i'm emna mishri uh, i am the marketing uh, director of innova robotics uh, innova robotics was founded in 2014 um, it's a startup company and uh, founded by Anis Sahbeni. Uh, what we really uh, do, uh, in fact, we manufacture uh, autonomous and mobile robots and we develop uh, artificial intelligence algorithms and uh, robotic software. Uh, our product uh, our product uh, uh, PGAD for security and safety uh, VSense for healthcare, AGV for logistic, HelloBot for marketing, and uh, Minilab for education. Uh, so, PGARD, we will talk about it uh, later, uh, but uh, let's take uh, VSense. Uh, VSense is a telepresence uh, robot, uh, health medicine staff for the diagnostic uh, patient. Also, it, uh, it gives the opportunity to family of patients to uh, to call the patient uh, distantly and uh, check uh, check uh, her uh, her uh, uh, the the patient in fact and uh, also um, it has been uh, used in hospitals uh, like uh, hospital of uh, Abdurrahman Maimi in Tunis uh, during uh, the epidemic uh, crisis and uh, for AGV is a logistic uh, robot um it's um it's a uh, uh, it's uh, automate uh the process of uh, storing uh, and moving goods as they make their way through um uh, through the supply chain it has been uh, used also in drugs and mine in tunisia and uh, in germany for hello bot is uh, it's, it's like the essence uh, robot is telepresence robot it's a robot uh, to go beyond the video conference and uh, make remote work uh, truly collaborative. Uh, actually, you can use it for the next uh, event, maybe. And uh, for Minilab, it's a programmable uh, robot um, for education. It's used by university and students for their research. Uh, going to PGARD, the security robot, it's um, uh, all-terrain autonomous uh, robot patroller dedicated to security and safety. The main features of uh, PGUARD is uh, survey, patrol, detect, uh, alerter, deter. And uh, I want to show you this video about PGUARD. So it's equipped by a uh, uh, thermal camera, a night vision camera, and uh, it works with uh, EI algorithms. He, entre, uh, he, uh, he detects intrusion, alert the post command. It presents also a video and uh, audio streaming. Warning, you are on a site protected by film by cameras. Please leave the site immediately. I repeat, please leave the site immediately. By user interface, you can uh, set up big admissions and uh, patrols. We can see here there is uh, more than 500 classes of detectable objects, like person, like object, car, uh, truck, bus, uh, traffic lights, uh, 
uh, all of this, uh, uh, there, there are a uh, work of EI and algorithms and uh, the, and uh, uh, and uh, and the team of uh, intelligence artificials, uh, artificials, and uh, we can see here also, uh, Pigard is equipped by uh, recharge automatically uh, docking stage. Uh, he can automate automatically uh, uh, recharge thanks to uh, his charging station. We present. Uh, Today, more than uh, 10 to 20 uh, reference and partners, they trust us. And uh, we are also today more than 35 innovators and we're still growing. So thank you so much. Thank you for the presentation and a very interesting product and an interesting company you have over there. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, then we have another company presentation by Mr. Usama Mesoud. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Can Did you, you, you have a presentation also to share us? No, I don't. I don't have a presentation. I will. Uh, I will talk um, and I will share with you some information. Um, maybe if we have time, I can also show you some of our products. Uh, directly live, but um, so thanks uh, for having me. Um, uh, doc so my name is Utema Masoud. I'm a chairman and co-founder of Datavora, which is a Tunisian uh, startup uh, founded in uh, 2016 by Hedi Zeher, who is the CEO today, and myself. Um, Datavora is a, is a very quickly a, um, a company uh, that empowers uh, small and uh, medium uh, online retailers um, with, uh, with a world-class technology that allows them to uh, to compete with retail giants like Amazon and uh, uh, the companies of, of the same kind um, uh, in terms of um, repricing, uh, price monitoring, um, and the technologies that allow them to uh, to uh, to increase their revenue uh, by, by doing so. So uh, the idea was that we developed a technology that um, allows us to uh, collect data at a very high frequency um, from the web. Um, so uh, we can um, today uh, collect data from more than 2,000 uh, online uh, retailers, uh, I mean e-commerce websites, uh, all around the world, so we cover websites in almost 50 countries in the world, and we do this um, on a daily basis uh, with a high frequency to allow our customers uh, to uh, to uh, to have uh, to watch the competition, uh, to watch the markets, uh, and to adjust their strategies uh, uh, in terms of sales uh, and marketing accordingly, uh, and uh, to uh, in order to uh, optimize their margins and uh, increase um, their revenue. Um, so today, uh, this is our uh, our main um, our main um, market. We work uh, in the retail market, uh, but we are also developing um, POCs in other verticals, like for example, insurance. Um, so collecting data from um, uh, of uh, insurance uh, offers uh, that are available to customers. Uh, um, so uh, we uh, are trying also to see how we can expand our technology to, to other verticals in terms of, of, of uh, web uh, data uh, collection. Um, when collecting data, we, we use a lot of um, AI, uh, so uh, in uh, mainly two fields. The first one is that we have a lot of data today. We, are all around, uh, we have around uh, 7 billion data points that we collected since 2003. Uh, 2016, um, and uh, this allows us to uh, to uh, develop use cases like prediction of um, of prices, which is a very interesting use case for retailers uh, that work mainly in the online um, in the online um, um, uh, in the online field. Uh, the the e-commerce today is is becoming more and more uh, important, especially with the COVID-19 situation. So. 
So today it's very important to have to predict what's happening uh, in the market as uh, this uh, part of the business is growing uh, in, for retailers uh, uh, all, around, all around the world. Uh, so this is a, a, a use case that we are all working on heavily, uh, heavily right now, um, using all the assets that we have uh, from, the, um, from the data that we, uh, we've been collecting uh, for, the last, uh, for the previous years. Uh, the other thing is also the uh, computer vision uh, part. Um, as we work with products online, um, we face the problem of matching the products in order in order to be able to compare uh, comparable products. Uh, for that, we use all the features that we have on the product product um, on the product page, including the the pictures. And uh, we um, we read the pictures and we. Um, uh, and we developed also a technology that can uh, enrich um, um, uh, the, uh, or, or extract features from the pictures directly. And uh, for that, we also have uh, now we are now developing uh, a separate technology for that. And for example, we uh, we collaborated with an, another startup in Tunisia, uh, which is. Um, uh, Zera, for example, which is an agri-tech company, uh, and we work together on a on a use case for uh, automatic counting of uh, oranges in the trees uh, using our technology um, that we developed from working on the on on big data big data from uh, from e-commerce. Um, so this is what we are doing today. Uh, data Bora is just an example like, uh, like Innova Robotics or Zero or any other startup company uh, today in Tunisia of, of, uh, of fresh and new innovative companies that are being created in Tunisia uh, and being uh, accelerated by the, 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 the Startup Act um, that has been voted uh, recently. Uh, which is a very important law uh, for um, for supporting innovation and supporting inno innovative companies and startups in Tunisia. It it creates a special um, a special framework, uh, legal framework for companies like ours that allows us to be uh, more uh, to be more open to the international world. Today, that Evora has customers in in Europe and has customers in North America, um, a part of the customers that we have uh, in Tunisia. So it's, it's, very, it's very important. Another very important part, since we are talking about Finnish-Tunisian uh, relationship, is, um, is that uh, um, the Startup Act also gives uh, more um, uh, opportunities for foreign investors to invest in, uh, in uh, innovative companies and startups in Tunisia. So it creates also a very uh, interesting framework for them uh, to invest uh, in those companies. Uh, it, uh, it also uh, eases the procedures of uh, getting their money back after they invest, when they exit the companies later, etc. So it's very interesting. And what is interesting is that also you have the opportunity today, for example, for foreign, uh, for Finnish um, companies or Finnish investors to invest in, uh, in really dynamic markets uh, with very um, in, in a very um, um, promising uh, companies uh, and the opportunity to invest early and to have the possibility of a very very big uh, return on investment um, uh, later. So um, I see this as a very interesting interesting part. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I think I talked about every, everything I wanted to talk about, uh, and I'm here for you if you have any questions for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Masari. That was that was interesting. You have an interesting company. Um, I would like to ask a quick question before we go to the larger question answer section. Who is your uh, competitor? Uh, because you, the data collection is, I think that's a pretty. Is that a pretty competitive business field or? Yeah, exactly. We um, at the beginning we identified when we we started we identified like twenty competitors around the world. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, we talked to some of them also, and we uh, we uh, we uh, also were willing to find uh, uh, any any intersections with them. the The idea that we brought today is that we um, each of those competitors try to uh, concentrate their efforts on a specific niche or on a specific market. 
Um, the idea behind Datavora is also is uh, really to be global, uh, to create a technology that can really work on very large and very large scale uh, data collection. So in that sense, we found out we find ourselves competing with some of our competitors in some in some specific niches. Um, but we didn't see any actor trying to go uh, after a, a global coverage uh, and uh, really a deep technology that uh, allows to do this. Mm, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. We've had really, really interesting keynote speakers and, and interesting presentations. So now we go into the questions and answers section. And I would actually like to go. There was first question from Yari. Yari, do you want to ask this question yourself? Are you still on the line? No, sure, I'm on the line. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, thank you for this opportunity and many, <clears throat> many thanks also for the, the presentations. So I'm Yari Kaihari from uh, Business Finland, Casablanca, Morocco, and uh, and uh, I'm interested to to, uh, to know and discuss uh, this question is uh, for Mr. Hanami. Um, um, how about the waste treatment? Uh, is there any fresh waste to energy project popping up, um, like waste burning to generate electricity, steam, or hot water? Yes, thank you for uh, this question. I already gave some uh, initial uh, answer uh, with, uh, within my presentation. I mentioned that uh, there are some opportunities, of course, for foreign investors within the waste uh, management uh, uh, sector, and it's mainly uh, through uh, uh, the uh, PPP scheme. So it's uh, we have to look all the, the details if you have uh, a description of your project, we can maybe uh, uh, get it and try to guide you with all those who are involved in this kind of project. Because we are, uh, our our mission is to uh, to provide information and guidance for foreign investors. But this kind of issue, because I think there are many uh, people which will be involved in this kind, because it's the waste management, the production of. Uh, energy i think uh, we need there are different departments which are involved and uh, uh, if you can provide us with uh, 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 your business case and uh, maybe we can discuss it with uh, the, the relevant uh, uh, department and can provide you with a detailed answer but just to say that the uh, framework is there and uh, we are looking really for foreign investors to be part of this dynamism in related to the waste management uh, sector, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, then there's uh, not yet another question. I would actually have a question to Mr. Hanami and Mr. Fayed. How does this? Um, how does it differ? Your you have the other one is is the Tunisian Export Promotion Center, and then. The other one is invest in Tunisia. So how you um, how do you differ? Like if the company wants to start going to Tunisia, from which way do they start? Do they start both of you, or how how does that how does how do you divide your your efforts and and your services to the companies? Well, my colleague I met already uh, gave uh, some uh, an overview about uh, the uh, Tunisian trade office, but uh, with regard to the foreign investment. Uh, agency uh, we are mainly looking for foreign investors so we are the uh, looking for uh, investors to provide them with the information on the business environment on the investment opportunities and uh, how to proceed in tunisia so we are dealing uh, primarily with new investors of course we are also uh, supporting uh, existing foreign investors in, Tunis in tunisia either if they have to, to help them to answer to their uh, request or to uh, accompany them within their expansion plans. So uh, we are mainly dealing with foreign, exclusively with foreign investors, and Tunisian when they are working with foreign partners. Uh, so, uh, of course, we are a different uh, organization. We know that, in, uh, for instance, in Finland, it's, so you have Business Finland, which is dealing with investment and uh, export. 
but in Tunisia we are still have different organization, but we are working together and we are coordinating on daily basis. Uh, our our efforts are mainly with promoting the potential of Tunisia abroad. So we are uh, always together when we are they are organizing the Tunisian pavilion uh, in different uh, uh, international exhibitions. So we work together. And uh, they are dealing with exporters. Their main uh, mission is to support Tunisian companies to uh, access to new markets. But we are looking to foreign investors to come to invest in Tunisia. But at the end, we are dealing with the same because exporters are Tunisian and are foreigners. Uh, well, uh, right now we are trying to do our best to uh, ensure good coordination. But we don't know, maybe in the future there will, there would be more synergy uh, as it is uh, in the case in other countries. But uh, we are aware about that. But we choose for different organizations. But there are, there are other uh, sectoral organizations. So uh, the, uh, other promotional agencies in the uh, industry, in the agriculture, uh, and so on. And in tourism, so we are split. We are uh, now working on... Uh, uh, specialization in different sectors, but we have good collaboration with the CPEX so far, as he mentioned, uh, with regard to promoting Tunisia abroad, we are always together. So, and we have also different uh, overseas offices. Uh, no, um, some of them, they are in the same uh, countries where we are uh, present, but this is the case right now for today. We don't know, maybe in the, in the future there will be other uh, uh, organizational schemes, yeah. I maybe you can uh, add any other. Uh, Just to add, uh, Mr. Arbi, uh, investment and exportation, export are very close. So uh, the two institutions, they have the same. Uh, um, uh, we are we are we are promoting the uh, Tunisian image worldwide. So it's the same thing, but everyone has. Uh, special uh, roles and duty. So uh, the investor, we are dealing with exporter. And FIPA is dealing with investor because we have to invest before exporting. Because why people invest in Tunisia? To export. Because we are a small market. Yeah, the <clears throat> foreign company coming to Tunisia to have this business climate to produce and to have this uh, uh, producing, uh, the cost is less than Europe and you find the qualified uh, uh, people, engineering, and your uh, cost is less. So people coming to Tunisia to uh, to invest and to export, not to sell to Tunisian markets. So after the establishment of this investor, after the FIPA do his jo a job and uh, make it easy for investor to show him the opportunity, and when this investor uh, become a producer and pro have a product and uh, and want to export. We are here, so we are we are here to prospect, to open the market, to assist him, to participate with us in the trade fairs, to give him information. So we are a complementary uh, uh, role. So uh, uh, people come here to invest in Tunisia, not to sell to Tunisia, to sell, to export, and to, uh, as I, I said in the presentation, uh, when you produce this in Tunisia, you can sell it for 1.3 billion consumer, not for 10, uh, 12 million Tunisian. This is uh, the difference between investment, the investment before export. We invest and after we export. Thank you. Very good answers. And like you still said that you work together and this is how it goes. It, it's, it's both ways. So very good answers. Thank you for that. You. Um, Birgit, do you want to explain about the matchmaking, the Fin partnership? Is Birgit there on the line? Yes, you want I, I'm here. I'm just trying to get the camera on. Maybe you see me. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you for, for this uh, opportunity to speak. Uh, fin Partnership is the Finnish Foreign Ministries program. We are run by Fin Fund, which is a development investor. And we uh, give financial grants uh, to projects, for example, if somebody wants to make something more than just exporting something to T Tunisia. The things that we have already heard from previous speakers, if, they, if you want to make a joint venture or some sort of investment there, uh, for these preliminary phases 
to find out how to do this, we can cover 70% with a grant fund. So it's, it is uh, quite tempting. I hope we will see some new projects after this uh, to Tunisia. And also Tunisian companies, you are very welcome to our matchmaking. It's free of charge and we try to find a partner for you. And we will make the first step, actually, this is new. We also make a digital meeting between you and the Finnish uh, potential partner. So all of you are welcome to use all our services. Thank you. Thank you. Matchmaking is very worthwhile and Film Partnership does that really well. So thank you, Birgit, for that. Um, do we have any questions for the, for the speakers? Is there something the speakers still want to point out? Or did you have some questions between yourselves and also the company, company members? If not, I think that we can then say that this was a very fruitful webinar and like I said, your presentations were very, very well, well, well informed and, and if we can have them and send them to the participants. Oh, Sarah, Her Excellency, please do. Your mic is not on, your mic is still on mute. I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask um, the representative of Business Finland um, in Morocco about um, the future programs in the region. Are there any plans for Tunisia? Very good question. Um, yeah, uh, you take the lead. Let's let's yeah. let's put the things so that we are we we started here in Morocco in the beginning of uh, 2020 and we faced directly to COVID that you certainly know. So we are still preparing the startup. So we have to concentrate our logical intention for the closest country, which is uh, Morocco. And this is very well understandable. In the long term, there is all possibilities to um, uh, to work uh, also with the uh, surrounding countries like Tunisia, Mauritania and Algeria. But for the moment, we have to concentrate our intention, the most of our uh, the, uh, energy to this country where we are based in. I could also. I actually. I have one one question. Um, you were talking about um about the, there was a really good presentation, and the details about the supporting systems you have and the law and regulations how you how you support the companies. Is there um a law or regulation that if a foreign company um puts up a, a local branch in Tunisia, is there like some kind of law that you have to have? Is, is it like just um, you can own like 100 percent or is there any kind of law between that you have to have like a local partner? Um, is it a joint venture you you actually recommend or just to put up? How, how do you how do you actually recommend to do that if you it would come and want to open a local branch in Tunisia? Because you had a really good system with the with the subsidiaries and everything, I think that that was very very well thought and and, that, and you had a real good system for that. Is there a law for that ownership? Yes, indeed. As I mentioned, the foreign investors are free. They can. It's up to them. They can hold up to one hundred percent of the capital without any restriction in most sector exception for the agriculture. They need a local partner because. The, the appropriation of land is not uh, uh, possible for foreign uh, investors. They can hold up to 66% uh, of the capital. That's why the, this is the only restriction. But for most of the sectors, in particular in the manufacturing, in the uh, uh, service activities, it's possible for foreign companies to establish 100% uh, foreign company in Tunisia. Thank you. Yari had a question there or a remark. Yeah, it's not a question. It's just a precision. 
that I, I didn't say. Uh, I'm, I'm not closing the door. We are not closing the door. When there is cases which are coming, popping up to us, we don't say no. We are trying to help as well as it's reasonably possible. But we are not going into the market to dig up the, 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 the opportunities. Thank you. Probably it's also difficult now because of the COVID. Again, um, you, as, as you all know, that Business Finland has very good these business delegations. But of course, now as we have the travel restrictions, this is not possible. Hopefully we get the restrictions um, out, out soon so we can again start traveling and see face to face because when especially I think I think that when you're opening a new market you really would need to actually be able to travel and see face to face and create the trust and everything it's really hard to start start opening a new market whether you where you where you just behind the technology and virtual technology so I think that is something that probably have to wait a little bit for that but but Yari Yari and the business beyond I think that they will like like the Morocco example was really good that if we can then combine some issues over there. And then also Birgit mentioned that there are two projects in Tunisia um, which are now are they are they Birgit are they on the way up or at the beginning or are they actually on the way already? We have granted the funds for these two. So actually, uh, we had hardly anything year before that for Tunisia. So it is definitely positive development uh, in spite of the hard year. So we granted one grant for educational project and one for environmental project. So people are interested in Tunisia. I could also ask if Topi, Topi is at the Finnish Water Forum uh, managing director is also Topi. Are you still on the line over here? Because the water was also mentioned as one of the business sectors, and and I don't know if you're familiar with the Finnish Water Forum, which is uh, the association which is based on based totally on water water business field and 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 companies who actually and the ministries as well. So are you Topi there? Do you want to say something about it? Does we finish water for him anything on concerning Tunisia? I can see that Topi is on the line, but I'm not sure if he's. We can send you some information about the Finnish water forum. And then there's also a question of the con from Conrad Cadwell on the mining sector. Do you want to ask a question about that? There was a question about how is the mining sector in Tunisia at the moment. Ah, yes, yeah, sorry, it's Conrad Hodel, yeah. I uh, just wanted to find out real quick, how is the, the mining sector looking for 2021 going forward in Tunisia? Money. Excuse me, I didn't got the money sector. Yes, the mining sector, that how is it going to be? Uh, mining, mining, mining sector. Yeah. yeah. Yes, of course, there are opportunities in uh, different uh, sectors. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite uh, developing. And I, I think there are some already some uh, projects which has been granted to, uh, to uh, uh, foreign companies. I think five projects th this year. So it depends on uh, the, the, what kind of project because they are subject to uh, an authorization and approval from the uh, uh, ministry in charge of mining. So that, that, let's have a look on the details of uh, the, the project and we will be able to, to provide more uh, information and more details. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank what? you. And I think this is uh, these kind of webinars are a good start for 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 you know future cooperation and how we start networking and matchmaking and and these like I said now that we can't see we can have these webinars and concentrate on different kind of business fields if if we have people and we can gather people surrounding different business sectors we can then go a bit deeper in how the collaboration and yeah. and and you know we could actually proceed and how the companies should start you know moving forward with with the Tunisian market so. It's sort of you have to just go a bit deeper because this webinar when you, when we start doing like this we have all the business fields on the table but then if we get like companies and talking a bit more 
um, closely and go into details and get more details about the about the surgeon business sector and that's how it then proceeds. So this is the beginning now and then we can hopefully have new ones and go into a bit deeper later on. Um, but if there's not any questions anymore, I really thank you all the speakers. Uh, it was really nice to have you all here, Her Excellency, and 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 also every one of you in Tunisia and elsewhere. It was really nice to have you here, and I uh, will send you all the presentations, and and hopefully we'll get to continue from this, and we will find new markets and 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 together and work together with the Tunisian and Finnish markets. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank, thank you, you thank all. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Uh, and we are looking for uh, next uh, events. I think we it's a good opportunity that we try to provide a better understanding about the business environment in Tunisia and also the relations and the opportunities between Finland and Tunisia. We are optimistic. We believe that there are promising uh, opportunities that should be uh, taken into consideration between from the uh, Finnish side and from the Tunisian side. As you see, we are open uh, to any kind of uh, collaboration. And uh, all of us here in Tunisia, from the public sector, from FIFA, from CPEX, and as you can see also from the uh, startups, and they become now international companies. And I would like to thank Datavora and uh, Innova Robotics for joining us during this uh, webinar. And also the uh, Finnish side, which uh, have already done a good job to organize this first webinar. And our ambassador, uh, she is very active in uh, Helsinki. And uh, of course, also the Finnish embassy here. We have good relation with them. And we are looking to uh, other events with strong participation from the private sector from both sides. Thank you again. Thank you very much for your uh, time. Thank, Thank you very much, all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.